Israel had to become a nation. Secondly, Jerusalem had to be captured by the Jewish troopers. Thirdly, there had to be a European Union. Fourthly, they had to create a mark for the future, 666. Fifthly, there had to be a powerful Russia. Sixthly, a powerful China. And finally, a powerful Iran. And Iran is Persia in Ezekiel 38.5, who changed its name from Persia to Iran in 1935. Boy, the Bible's up to date. Why did no one ever see these signs? 1947 years passed, and no one saw one of the signs that I'm going to mention now. They all started in 48. Daniel 1.1, 1, 1, Nebuchadnezzar took the Jews from their homeland in 586 B.C., from that time until 1948, there was no nation called Israel. 2,534 years, but you live to see it, May 14, 1948, as they pulled up the six-pointed star of David. Amen? Did Jesus talk about that? He says, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches yet tender and puts forth leaves, summer is nigh. Ah, a pastor wrote me, said, you don't know that Israel's the fig tree. Well, buddy, if you read your Bible, you'd know it. The Bible interprets the Bible. Joel 1, verse 7. Israel's at war. And God says, the enemy hath stripped my fig tree. Israel. Plain. Hosea 9, 10. God speaking to the Israelites of old. I chose your father as the first ripened in the fig tree. Jesus to learn the parable of the fig tree. When this tree begins to branch out and it becomes a nation, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 11 and 12, that's when I'm going to return. Sign number one, it's happened. Now, I've tried to make this simple so you can understand it, and I'm going to close. Well, I tell you, I felt the anointing of the Lord tonight, and I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are not ready. We got this nonsense going on now. You don't need Jesus to get to heaven. The trouble is 57% of the evangelicals now believe it. The cream of the crop. That was in the Wall Street Journal. I got all the reports back there. Can you imagine almost six out of every ten members in these big mega churches now saying, we can get to heaven without Jesus? I wrote a book, Great Salvation Themes. Four hundred times it says Jesus is the only way, and seven hundred times it says it's only through his blood. I quoted on the program about uh, 100 in a three-week period. And I still had 300 to go and 700 on the blood. Now, if I tried to get into all those tonight, Pastor, we'd be here till next Sunday for the service. But believe me, folks, it's Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven but Jesus given by which men must be saved. Under Christ who loved us and washed us from our sins in polluted spigot water. That's all that water is in some of these tanks. We're not saved by baptism. Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.17. It's the precious blood of Jesus, 1 Peter 1.19. He made peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. Now, look, if you've never received Jesus personally, I'm going to ask you to pray and ask him to come into your heart in a few minutes from now. It's closing time, folks. We're going home soon. You don't want to be left behind. And some of you are not living for the Lord. I'll tell you, my heart breaks at what's going on in America. 11 million living together without a marriage license. And if Jesus comes tonight, you're going to be left behind. For no fornicator can enter the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. And fornication is the sin between the unmarried. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, neither be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers among the married, 
nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, of mankind, gay sex, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Man, you're not hearing this in our evangelical churches. They're hearing little sermonettes that make Christianettes. That's right. There is no more sin preaching. 614 times this book mentions sin, and you won't go to heaven if you live a life of sin. He that practices sin is of the devil, 1 John 3, 8. Not that we can't do wrong. Every one of us can. Any sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, 1 John 1, 8. Chapter 3, verse 8, but if you practice it, live in it, and you are never bothered, it doesn't phase you to go to nightclubs. It doesn't phase you to drink alcohol. It doesn't phase you to take drugs. It doesn't phase you to live with someone without a marriage. It doesn't. You are lost. And I preach this on television to the whole world, and I'll never back down. Now listen to me. No, please. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me right now. If you really want Jesus as your Savior, pray this silently as I pray. Follow my words. Lord Jesus, just quietly. I am a sinner. We've all sinned. But I want to be ready. When you come, Jesus, and I believe that's very soon. Come into my heart, Jesus. Cleanse me. Save me. Now through your precious shed blood at Calvary, I receive you as my Savior. Now for you folks who are Christians, but you're not in tune with the Lord, you know as soon as Jesus comes, we have to give an account of our lives. Every area. Would you pray this tonight? Lord Jesus, I've wandered far away from you. I'm coming back. I have loved the world and its pleasures. I have run to the places of the world. I've failed you, Jesus. I've lost my joy. And I'm coming home tonight. I'm coming back. Receive me, Jesus. I pray this in your holy name. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, how many of you right now will say, I prayed one of those prayers, Brother Benny, behold it high in the main floor first. Let me see them all over. Hold them up, please. Yes, I see hands going up everywhere. All across the bottom here. Oh, oh yes, amen. God is working here tonight. I'll never forget being here four or five years ago and the aisles were filled. Now listen to what Jesus said. Whosoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. If you just prayed one of those prayers and you really meant it, I'm going to ask you to come down these aisles tonight and stand here at the front and workers will come to be with you, to pray with you. Be sure you leave here saved tonight. Be sure you're ready for Christ's return because Jesus said the generation who lives to see these seven signs and no one has seen him until your generation is the generation that will be alive for my return. Don't be left behind for the rapture. Let's all stand together. Please, no one leaving the auditorium for a few minutes. Let's be very respectful. I'm going to ask you to begin coming and in a few minutes from now I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor. Would you just come down these aisles? Come on. Everyone keep coming. I see others moving out right now from the main floor, from the balconies. Just keep coming, will you? Amen. Amen. Just keep coming. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. Oh, this is a great night. God is speaking to hearts. Just keep coming. I see you coming from the back from many areas already. We're waiting for you. I'm going to ask Pastor to come. Thank you, Christians, for praying. Come on up, just as close as you can.
Thank you, Dr. Van Empe. There is such a powerful anointing in this place. And you know something I found out? When Dr. Van Impey leads people to the Lord, they stick.